Okay, this is supposed to be a nice calm introduction to today's video and the uh, introduction to the spawning that hopefully is going to be taking place. Uh, last night we I put together the parent set for today's spawning, which is planned to be done artificially. Uh, so I think we plan to do all the way through um, this year. Um, to get more of an idea about the numbers, etc., of the eggs and the fertilization rates and that kind of thing. Um, the reason I put, them, I put them together earlier than normal was in the hope that I'd get an earlier spawning, um, sort of early evening tonight or you know, before midnight tonight. Um, seems the fish have got other ideas and they've just started spawning. It's now 9.30 in the morning. Um, so I haven't got any video gear really at the moment. So just film me us on the phone so hopefully you can hear it. Um, so yeah, um, that's where we're at. They've started spawning. Um, and we now are waiting for them to probably start releasing eggs. Sign that she's actually releasing eggs, at which point I'll separate her and the males apart and then I can get the stuff sorted outside, um, ready for the stripping of the eggs and the stripping of the sperm and the mixing process and I'll show you all that as it hopefully happens. It's now 5.15 p.m. Uh, the earlier action that's nine o'clock this morning um, hasn't materialized or anything, unlike, oh, unlike I expected it to. It seemed they were really on it this morning. Indeed, all through the night, they seem to be very quickly on it. Um, and throughout the day, they've occasionally come together and they, they splashed, but she's not released any eggs yet. So at the moment, we're still waiting for that to happen um, before we can do any more. So it's a waiting game, and as was my suspicion, seems that we'll probably going to have a, a, a nighttime session of artificial spawning. But time will sell. Okay, just coming up to 8 p.m. Um, so 23 hours since the the parents put together, got the male and females or males and females were put together. Um, obviously, just getting dark outside, or getting a little bit darker. Got a dull evening, cloudy evening, so uh, it's going to be dark fairly early, I think. Um, and they're just starting to show a little bit more enthusiasm for one another. Uh, so they've been on and off during the day. Um, many times during the day, I saw them come together and they, they did a little shimmy together but I expected to find some eggs coming out of the female but it wasn't to be um, but I'm hopeful that fairly soon um, we'll have the first eggs coming out from the female and then we can start to progress with the um, artificial spawning process. So it's uh, 9.43 now, and here with me, my nephew Samuel, who you may remember, uh, was out in um, Burning Koi Farm with us for his work experience, and he's now going off to university to do marine biology, so it's his first proper experience of aquaculture. <laughs> and Glenn, his uncle, uh, my sister-in-law's brother, who's here to lend a hand as well. Um, so we just need the fish to do the job now. Um, but it's looking pretty good, so I'm hopeful that within the next 15 minutes or so maybe we'll get some action. Okay, 11pm and finally uh, she released her first eggs. 
they were going like crazy at it, um, but there was not a single sign of eggs coming out of her. Um, and then suddenly there was a whole swathe of them up the side of the net. So immediately, males and females separated. The males would come to the outside of the net. Females sit inside the net. Um, we've got the stuff already outside, um, which at midnight, um, we'll start with uh, anesthetizing the female to strip the eggs. So I'm gonna show you outside and show you how we set up and what the plan is from now. Okay, first of all, some bowls of water, obviously. First one, we just put the female in. Um, we have the water that comes with it from the, uh, with the carrying sock, whatever. Second bowl here, anaesthetic. From the anaesthetic, plan is that she'll come here onto the table and be wrapped in this towel, um, at which point we have to make sure the vent is clean and dry. We have bowls here ready to catch the eggs um, and the scales to weigh the eggs so we know exactly how many she's got. Um, and then thereafter, we have water to mix with the eggs, milk to start the, the cleaning time uh, for the cleaning cycle of cleaning the stickiness from the eggs before they go to the hatching jars which are inside, uh, which we've shown in a while. So for now it's coffee break time whilst we wait until midnight and we can start stripping the female. So I'll say a female now on her own in the net and the male is chasing around the outside trying to work out how they continue the process they've just started for them on this occasion the fun is over but obviously it's, you know, it keeps everybody in the mood you know, for when they need to be stripped of eggs or, or the sperm so You see very much with her body how the eggs, she was always a full body, but the, 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 the eggs have dropped back there. You see the definite sort of curvature underneath her uh, where the eggs have, have dropped back. So the, she's been left now for an hour because those eggs that she started to release, um, they need to settle so they come out more easily when, uh, when she's stripped. So. Okay, so now midnight so she's been waiting for an hour um, since she first released eggs so hopefully when we look underneath her she'll be nicely uh, free playing eggs so I'm going to pop in anaesthetic and obviously it'll take a few minutes for her to go under One of the most important things at this point in time is keeping everything dry, um, which is easier said than done. Um, the eggs and the sperm both are activated by water. Obviously, we don't want them activated until they come together, um, otherwise they could mess the eggs up and before they're fertilised. So when we strip the eggs, it's important that we don't get any water into the bowl that the eggs are stripped into. Um, so once she's wrapped up, we've got loads of kitchen towel there to dry everything off and make sure there's no water dripping anywhere. So, uh, like Nago Oka Koetel, going to be used to wrap the female. So obviously you need to wait for it to go under first. Okay, so she's suitably anaesthetized. So we should wrap her up in the towel. Okay, Samuel. You need that bowl, you need mm -hmm. to make sure your hands are dry. Yep. And you need to dry me. Wait, 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 wait. I need to dry her as well. Mm -hmm. So I need you to dry all around the vent. No, 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 not with a towel, with a piece of kitchen towel. Really, really dry. Really, really, really dry. All these little nooks and crannies that water can get stuck in. Mm -hmm. 
Cover that now. Put it on the table. And there we have. Oh. A whole load of eggs. Can you see that glow over there? Mm -hmm. See how the whole abdomen now is all loose and saggy where it has no eggs. This is the last few coming out, I think. Right, she can go back in the water. Right, so I'm gonna make sure that bit of foil, no, not that, get new piece. Yep. Right, so now the magic number, how many eggs do we have? Got a little weight of this bowl on here somewhere. So the bowl weighs 127 grams. Three ninety four, so two hundred and sixty grams of eggs. So they tell me that one gram of eggs is seven hundred eggs. So someone's got a calculator from that up. <laughs> well, we got plenty of eggs, more than I intend to hatch from. So that's that pot done, and she's luckily happily coming around. So now next job's get a mail out, and we'll start stripping the mail off. Obviously there's two males inside the tank, um, the Marasaka Benikika Kiri male is the male that primarily we're going to use. And like the female, it needs to be anaesthetised first. Can I have a small white towel on top of this thing in here? So, as, I said, with the, as with the female, um, if water gets with the sperm, um, it starts to activate it, and it, obviously, once it's activated, it's not with the eggs, it's not doing anything. So, we need to go and keep everything dry.
the thing that I have is from, I think. Yeah. Rub them properly. <laughs> Okay, I'll need a syringe out of there, please. Okay, okay so you can just, so just put your arms underneath, that's it, just support the body. So you can see sperm coming really, really easy. Easily out the vent there. Get rid of the first bit in case there's some water inside the vent that we obviously don't want. We actually need very, very little of what I'm collecting here, to be honest. That's what, good three or four millilitres, milli, yeah, millilitres. Can I have another syringe? We have enough there for the first mix that we're going to do. So he can join her back in the water to recover. So we have eggs and their sperm for our first mix. So now I need to decide how many I'm going to do. So realistically, I'm kind of thinking. If I have the other male as well, um, I'll probably do two jars of this with uh, probably 15,000 in each jar. So I need 30,000 eggs basically. Oh, sorry, yeah, so 30,000 eggs, which is off the top of my head, uh, well, if I do 20, 20 grams, 20 grams of eggs per. Yeah. Right, first of all, We have 30 grams of eggs, so 20 odd thousand baby, uh, 20,000 eggs in there. And in here we have a good two milliliters of, of sperm, which we're going to mix into it first of all. Can you pass me a feather, please? How the pack is nice. So all we're doing here, mixing this round to mix the sperm and the eggs together. And they tell me at the moment, all that's happening here is literally mixing it together. So 
there's no fertilization taking place at this particular moment in time. However, what will happen when we add water is fertilization will start to take place. So can you start that stopwatch on the iPad for me, please? Seven, seven, four, seven. Okay. Keep asking a small jug of water and then get the milk ready as well, please. So apparently the fertilization of these eggs takes place within the first sort of 50 seconds of one minute of this mixing taking place and they start then to get sticky. Um, obviously the eggs normally would stick to the sides of weeds or whatever in the wild. So we mix this for a couple of minutes. To get that fertilization taking place. So we pour a little bit of that milk into here, please. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, so this milk has stopped the, or started to stop the stickiness of the eggs, apparently. Stop them clumping together in a lump. And now I'm going to transfer this to one of the McDonald's jars, the hatching jars inside. So if you follow me with that milk, Sammy, please. Okay, so And here we can see the eggs now bubbling around in this milky water mixture. Um, and they're going to stay in there for an hour, so some could be an hour's time of this. So that's the first process. So we're going to do another one of this, then we're going to get the other male out, um, and we'll make another male mixed with the Guinea Met Scar Bucket, is the plan. As you can see, these two have come around, no problem after you're out of We turn her over, we can see her, her stomach now, nothing to it, just completely empty. Um, so, these two are done, their job's done for the night, for the year, and we'll pop those back into the main pond. Um, well, they can go and tell their friends what out there evening now. Yep. Okay, so the eggs have been in here, in this milk and water mixture, uh, for just coming up to an hour now. 
So I can take the air out now, I can see that the eggs are all single and um, bubbling around in that in the milk mixture. So now we need to change the air and put water through, um, flush the milk out, and then it's in the incubation period for the eggs basically. So first of all, this tube will go in size, remove the air, um, then this water supply, we turn the tap on and just start gently putting water through and then you'll see the, the milk rise up to the surface and wash out and we'll collect that in a bowl and get rid of it um, and then eventually you just see the eggs rolling around at the bottom of the jar um, where they'll stay while they fertilise. That's the theory, so obviously I've never tried this with eggs in the jars before so let's see how we go. Water pump, there's a national pump inside the tank which is supplying the water to this, uh, this pipe. Good. We just already run this through here apparently at about one gallon per minute. So let's see how we go. See the eggs starting to move around at the base of the chamber. So it's now 2 a.m. Um, our job's done here. Um, massive thanks to Samuel and to, um, to Glenn for coming around and helping out. Um, daunting task to have done on the on your own. Uh, always useful to have uh, several pairs of hands available. Um, there's always something not quite at hand that you need when you um, don't expect it. So massive, massive thanks to them. Um, Really happy to have three jars of um, three McDonald's jars behind me, uh, running with um, so 30 grams of eggs in, so maybe around 20,000 eggs um, in each jar. So I'm really happy, really happy um, to, to have done that. And um, now hopeful for the morning. Uh, tomorrow we'll find out how many uh, what the fertilization fertilization rate is like. Um, as those eggs are tumbling around in the jars. So, for me, now bed, and um, I should be up in a few hours' time to check everything's still running okay.